Alrighty, so I'll go ahead and run my application. I'll open up a terminal window and I'll run the app using ng-serve. All right, so the app is up and running. I'll swing into a browser and test it out. Okay, so we have our list of products. Now let's scroll to the bottom and see if we can see our pagination control. And oh yeah, this looks pretty good. Check it out. So I'll zoom in here. So our database has 25 books. Uh, the page size is 10. So we should have three pages of data, 10, 10, and five. So uh, this is great. And if you click on any one of these pages here, then it'll call that list products method and it'll list those products for that given page. So I'll just move over to page two. And then, yep, so there we go. 10 products, four, four, and two. And then page three, five products, four and one. Great. So this looks pretty good. So our pagination is working out um, as desired. But let's go ahead and look behind the scenes and uh, let's get a bit more info as far as what's happening with our data and, uh, and also what data we have uh, in our given database. So I'll go ahead and open up MySQL Workbench. I want to run some queries here on my database. So here we see that we have our products and then we do a count star. This will tell us how many we have. So we have a total of 100 products. Okay, that's pretty good. And now remember when we view the products by category, so we have 25 books, 25 coffee mugs, mouse pads and luggage tags. So 25 each, that's why we saw just 25 in the previous example in the web app, but we have a total of 100 products out there total. So here to do a query just on books, so where category ID equals one, that's the ID for books. And I could also just do a select star. And just highlight that and execute that query only. And so those are all of the books that we have um, in this example. Okay, good. And I could do a similar thing for another category ID of two. And so that'll give me all of the coffee mugs. So we have 25 coffee mugs and select count star for category ID two. And that'll give me 25. So we have 25 per category. Four categories, a total of 100. Good job. And so I can simply go through and just check some of the other categories and a similar thing here at the bottom with the pagination. So this is uh, pretty good. I like how this is working out for us. Now let's swing over into our IDE and let's play around a bit uh, with the actual page size. Right now we have page size equals 10, but let's play around with the page size and change it to five. Just to verify that the pagination control is being generated dynamically and it's using this information to generate those controls. All right, so I have page size equals five. I save it, reloaded, go to books over here and scroll down and excellent, good job. So notice here our pagination control. So our database has 25 books, page size of five. So we have five, five, and five. Excellent, excellent, I love this. And I can simply choose some of the links here at the bottom to go through the different pages. Okay, good job. And so now I'll swing back and I'll change the page size to 50, okay? <laughs> I'm just having fun here. Uh, we really only have 25 products per category, but I'll change it to 50 just to see what happens uh, in our application. So swinging back into our app, scrolling down to the bottom. Wow, a lot of products, that's good. 
And our database has 25 books, page size of 50. So we have one page of data. <laughs> and uh, that's it, just one page of data. All right, same for all the other product categories. Okay, so that's it. So we had a good time of playing around with page sizes and seeing how this would affect our pagination control.